Hey guys, it's your pal Victor here from Cult Classics and Cult Following, and I am here with another movie review. That's right, movie review is something that we do a lot here at Cult Following. And today we are reviewing uh, Jacob's Wife, Jacob's Wife. Um, I originally saw this at uh, South by Southwest last month, but I was sitting on the, but I was sitting on doing a video review, waiting for the. Um, uh, theatrical release, which is this weekend. Um, and this movie is written and directed by Travis Stevens, who did a movie I really liked last year called The Girl on the Third Floor that starred, um, Phil Brooks, aka CM Punk, and it was kind of like a spin on The Shining somewhat. And, uh, I dug it and I was looking forward to seeing what other stuff Travis might be up to. And, um, so this movie, which stars, um, Barbara Crampton, who you might know from like, Reanimator or Dead Night or Chopping Mall. Um, we are still here. Uh, you're next. You know, horror icon. We all know who she is. Um, and it also stars Larry Fessenden, who's also in, um, I think he's also in, uh, you're next. Um, at the beginning, you know, yeah you're next <laughs> the, the, you know they have the the song playing over and over and over in that room and on the loop in vinyl anyway so larry fessenden in this plays a preacher and barbara crampton plays his wife and who's like you know dutiful preacher's wife um you know in a shrinking congregation much like churches in america today um but she feels really stifled in her role. You know, the title of the movie tells it all. It's not called Anne. It's Jacob's wife. You know, she's subservient to her husband. And the main point of this movie is about agency and actual actualizing your own person. And, you know, what better way to do that than by empowering yourself through monsterhood? Um, You know, and it's funny because, like, the main uh, publicity still you see for this movie is like a flip on the Stepford Wives from the ending where robot Joanna has taken over Joanna's agency and that kind of tips you off uh, where this is going. Of course, I'm talking about the 1975 Stepford Wives, not the Frank Oz, Nicole Kidman travesty. Um, I love the original Stepford Wives, just say It's one of my favorite movies. So um, one of my favorite, like, you know... Uh, methodically paced classic science fiction movies. It's by Ira Levin, the guy who wrote Rosemary's Baby. If you don't like methodically pa methodically paced horror, you probably don't like The Stepford Wives or Rosemary's Baby. So, digression. Right, we're back to the movie. So, um, you know, uh, Barbara Crampton's Anne is feeling stifled, and um, she gets a chance to uh, hook up with an old flame, who's played by Robert Russler, who you might know as... The other douche who, besides Robert Downey Jr. in Weird Science, he's also um, in Nightmare on Elm Street 2. He's the final boy's best friend. You know who I'm talking about now. Um, but basically, you know, they go to meet up and circumstances happen. And, you know, uh, vampirism is afoot. And, um, you know, from there, I'll, I'll kind of let you go with it. I don't want to spoil too much. It, it's an interesting movie. I think your mileage may vary on this one. Uh, realistically, I do have issues with it. I mean, I, I feel, honestly, this is one of those movies that might have been better off as part of, like, an anthology show. Like, if this had been, like, an episode of Creep Show, like, an hour long, I think it would have been way better. I think at two hours, it, like, drags, um... Because uh, the B storyline is kind of just like, eh, you know. And even the A storyline, like, once it, by the time it gets interesting, like I said, I love methodically paced things. This movie, the beats are pretty predictable, I think. Once you figure out what's going on, you'll be like, oh, I know where this is going. And I think you'll be rewarded by knowing, by having seen other movies. I also think... This is a personal preference of mine that I think a lot of people also agree with. Um, I think it's good to wear your influences on your sleeve. You know, if you dig, you know, punk rock zombie movies, you're probably going to like Return of Living Dead. And if you'll probably make a movie that's kind of like that. Um, Travis Stevens clearly, clearly really likes Salem's Lot, which also drags a lot, by the way. But, um... 
yeah, this movie, uh, very heavy Salem's Lot influence. Let me just say that. Take that however you want. Just take you take that with you into the movie. Yeah. Um, I you know what I, I like Salem's Lot, but I mean I just don't like it that much, you know. And um, also I really liked Phil Brooks, aka CM Punk, in Girl on the Third Floor, and he has a part in this. And unfortunately, he is not very good in this movie. It kind of feels like he's in a different movie than everybody else is in. Um, a lot of the cast from Girl on the Third Floor is in this movie. Um, and I like people who kind of bring their cast along with them. But I was kind of, exp you know, I was like, is, is, you know, the, the cast says CM Punk is in this movie. And you're waiting, waiting, waiting. By the time he shows up, it's kind of like, uh, oh, okay. Huh. Okay. So, yeah. I don't know. He's not a big part in this. He's, you know, like I said, it's not going to affect your rating of this movie either way. It's just kind of like, not the kind of way I thought he'd be used, but it might have been just, uh, hey, buddy, I'm making a movie. Want to be in it? Sure. You know? So on that writ level, I can't take away or add to it. It's just kind of like, oh, because he's in it, I thought kind of he'd be doing something cooler. Not so much. Um, but yeah, um, I also say if you are a Barbara Crampton stan, if you simp, for Barbara Crampton. If you dig Barbara Crampton and are a huge Barbara Crampton fan, you will like this movie because it's pretty much her movie. Um, I will say again, a tighter edit would have cut out a lot of this stuff, which is character stuff, but I feel like it's like, we don't really need it. It's kind of fat. I mean, some character stuff is good. There's just a lot of extended stuff here that I feel like doesn't actually add much and I'm always in favor of leaving in character moments I just feel there's just a lot in here and I know she's a producer too I don't know what level that played in here and I've you know I've interviewed Barbara Crampton before she's awesome she's a really cool person but I'm just gonna say um this movie probably would have been better as a short um it just it's too long and um judicious editing would have made it a lot better so that's kind of my two cents with it. I do, I like the eight mesh, the message of agency. I like the message of like um, you know uh, we're you know about uh, talking through relationships and making sure you're both equals in a relationship and not sort of subservient to the other. These are cool topics. In fact, it feels like it's going that way in one direction. You know, like oh, this is going to be a, about relationships. Kind of this is interesting, and then it kind of doesn't really go there all that much which is kind of disappointing. I just like, oh man, this, this could have been something really interesting, you know? Cause it's weird if I really think about it, there's not that many movies about like horror and relationships. I mean, there are, but they're usually kind of like corny, like that one Joe Dante movie with um, Anton Yel Yelchin burying the ax or like, you know, like episodes of like Tales from the Crypt. I'm just saying it, it felt like there was something here it could have been mine in a really cool and interesting way. So as not to be something just like, ha look, it's once bitten. Relationships and vampires. You know, I don't know. My two cents. But um, yeah, check it out. I'm sure it'll be on Shudder eventually. Um, and that's probably where I would wait to check it out. I don't know that it's worth a theatrical visit per se, but uh, or VOD. Yeah, just wait for Shudder or streaming. Um, but yeah, my two cents. Um, stay tuned for more videos and reviews coming soon. And thanks for tuning in, guys. Later.